Alrighty guys, we're back for Rakdos Dragons, and this is an Outlaws of Thunder Junction standard brew, and I'm Red Cat. Let's briefly go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked. Go over the new stuff first, there's not too many new cards packed in. Got three, a cool, the Unrepentant. Four mana, five, five, flying, trample. It is a legendary creature, it's a scorpion dragon rogue, which is pretty neat, and it also has a pretty neat ability too, so sacrifice three other creatures. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield, activate only as a sorcery and only once each turn as well. Big question there, of course, are we actually going to have three other creatures that we're willing to sacrifice? No, not often. This is realistically in here because it fits that dragon theme and it's a nice chunky dragon too and I totally think it's going to do a thing here and there, so yeah, I like it. Another new one, Terror of the Peaks, which is apparently a reprint, so I got pretty lucky here. I didn't have to craft all four of them. I happened to have one from an older set, or two from an older set, actually. Yeah, we do have all four Terror of the Peaks packed in. A five mana, five, four dragon with flying, and spells your opponent's cast that target Terror of the Peaks cost an additional three life to cast. Nice. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. That's a pretty ridiculous ability, dude, especially when we have so many chunky dragons packed in, huh? Like, check out this top end. Got a couple hoarding broodlords. That's a 7-6 with Convoke. Helps us grab something from the deck, and then also spells you cast from exile have Convoke too. So cards like Bonehorde Dracosaur that help us exile to see more off the top could go a long way if we have broodlord on the board, because Convoke goes a long way, honestly. Also, Dracosaur helps us, uh, you know, poop out some extra dinos onto the board that we wouldn't mind sacrificing to something like a cool, so we'll see how often those tokens actually come in handy to activate that ability. Plus, I have Decadent Dragon packed in here with that expensive taste. Also, Exiling cards, also working well with that Broodlord's bottom ability. Also, Decadent Dragon is just like a good dragon, dude. Four mana, flying, trample, four, four. And when it attacks, you create a treasure token. All that extra ramp goes a long way, but honestly, I think the mana fixing is going to go the extra mile because, yeah, this is a pretty greedy one with the double black and double red in the Akul, the triple black in the Hoarding Broodlord. It might honestly be pretty hard to cast some stuff. Give me one second here, guys. Okay, speaking of mana fixing, we also have Atsushi in here. If this dies, you totally create three treasure tokens because that's probably what you're most happy with. But also, you have that exile ability, which also kind of works with the Hoarding Broodlord if you happen to have that on the board too. I do think it's going to be treasure more often than not, just because like ramping or like even if you're not ramping into one big thing, being able to play two big things on the same turn could be huge. Uh, especially, again, if you have like set up with Terror of the Peaks on the board, then doing multiple things or dropping multiple creatures on the same turn uh, could just mean that you're winning that turn, you know what I mean? More mana fixing kind of sort of with the Realm Scorcher Hellkite here on the top end. It has that bargain ability when it ETBs. If it was bargains, you add four mana in any combination of colors. That's pretty darn good, and I think it's going to be pretty easy to bargain this too. At the front of the build, we have a whole bunch of uh, ramp kind of sort of, right? Or potential ramp with like Freebooter, for example. When this dies, you get that treasure token. A couple of Riveteers Requisitioners as well. Charming Scoundrel acting as ramp in here. Some early removal with Bitter Triumph. We got Invasion of Tark here acting as early removal too. Flipping this into Defiant Thunder Maw is going to be huge for this build as well. More early ramp with Celestis as well as Rivals of the Claw, which can also help us cast some dragons back from the grave. And our early board wipe is going to be a couple Brotherhood's Ends. There's going to be a lot of moments... Maybe you don't get the chump block with Freebooter, for example, where you just don't mind wiping the opponent's board, wiping your board, and now you're also ramping off of that too, getting those Freebooter treasure or the Requisitioner treasure as well. I think Brotherhood's End is going to be excellent. Okay, a mana base that I thought about for a while. Uh, Cavern of Souls is something I wanted to mention here. You could totally call human early on if you have to because of the, the Scoundrel and the Freebooter. You can also call Rogue quite successfully if you need to because of Requisitioner, Scoundrel, and also the Rogue on the Unrepentant too. And then you could also potentially uh, call the Viashino for the Rivas and the Requisitioner, but more often than not, you're going to call Dragon on this. Okay, guys, we'll save the more in-depth discussion for the end of the video. In the meantime, let's go ahead and take this into some ranked and see how we do. Okay, we'll see if we can get right into that first game here. Uh, heck yeah, we do. 
the first day of the new set, and there should be a ton of people playing, so. What am I expecting from the build? I don't know. Ramping into big, chunky creatures, I expect fun. That, that's it. I think that's all that matters in the long run. Opponent goes first, huh? All right, we can keep this, because we got the double red for the Brotherhood's End. Brotherhood's End coming down on time if we need to. No one mana card from the opponent. That's probably for the best. Oh, play with fire. Okay. Okay, so up against Mono Red, Brotherhood's End isn't as good against Mono Red as it is like against Boros or something. But, I mean, it's still going to do a thing. Oh, Scoundrel version, huh? Okay. That means it's very likely Godric Red, too. So we could actually have a really good board wipe here. Maybe we just go Invasion, though, get that set up. Scoundrel could jump for the turn, and we could uh, start the ramping process, too, because the sooner you get a big creature down, the better. Okay. I'll get a chump blocker down. We'll see if... I I don't believe... Okay. So, treasure token. So, turn three, a cool. Just seems really good to me. And chumping for the turn is fine, because Godric doesn't get into the air, because it's only turn three. And, like, Kamano wasn't on the board. Oh, another scoundrel. Well, these wicked rolls are going to be great for the opponent. Because once we, once we do end up wiping the board... They'll be poking some extra damage through. Okay. I'm totally okay with the chump while we have it. Let's see if Monstrous Rage comes down. It does not. It might be setting up for next turn, though. Okay. Well, we have... We have the 5-5. Five five. They swing for two. Witchstalker Frenzy cleans it up pretty nicely, huh? Maybe we take the turn... Maybe we do take the turn for Brotherhood's End. I'd rather hit three things. But we don't die next turn if it's like... If it's Godric, Mountain... One second, opponent. I am pondering, my friend. We'll only have four. We won't have Bonehorde Dracosaur next turn if we use this treasure. So if they go Mountain, they go Godric, and they Fool Swing, they go Witch Stalker Frenzy, kill the Akul, we survive. Then we drop Brotherhood's End, take an extra two there too, but the Godric's gone. Uh, we might be stuck between a rock and a hard place regardless, so let's just hope that they don't have Witch Stalker Frenzy, huh? Maybe this Akul is exactly what we need on the board on turn three. Really showcasing the power of Witch Stalker Frenzy just because, like, I have to sit here and sweat about it a little bit. Okay, so they go for the swing. It's not Godric. Um, I say we just take the four then. It's not worth a, uh, losing the big creature to the monstrous rage just yet. Confidence. That could be dangerous. All right. Now we wipe the board and hope that they don't poke the Akul with a play with fire. Surprised they didn't use. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold up. The invasion swing is much better, isn't it? Is it? That's it. Okay, red source swamp. We won't have anything else for the turn if we do that, though. This is better, though, right? We'll still have that blocker. And I doubt they're two mana. So actually, I am going to reveal the Decadent Dragon to them. Just to get around a potential buff spell, right? Like Blazing Crescendo or something. Make sure the Scoundrel actually dies. And I think that they'd want to save like a Crescendo anyways, but it's totally fine to reveal that extra to them. Uh, we're probably going to die next turn since we have nothing else to play in hand, but I just liked this line of play a lot better than the Brotherhood's End. All right, Defiant Thunderma. Let's see that eight damage opponent. If we had another two mana thing to do for the turn, I think maybe there is a chance of survival, but I don't know, especially Scamp too. Like when Scamp dies, it does that extra damage. So any amount of buffing there. Like, our blocks kind of become obsolete. 
We would have taken three damage from the Brotherhood's end play, remember, too, so... Uh, we're kind of forced to block Scamp, because if they get through with anything larger anyways... Let's get that uh, good game ready. Oh, it's still going to be six damage. Yep, yep. Yeah, so if we went Brotherhood's end, take, taking the three... Um, oh, good game opponent. I almost forgot to drop it to you. It would have been the safer bet. I don't know. I just, I didn't feel like playing it safe, did I? I just wanted more dragons on the board, I suppose. Yeah, there might have been a chance there. I guess I'll, I'll try to play it safer for you guys. I know, I know that the risky plays can be uh, frustrating sometimes. So, I think the, the big thing there was betting on the fact that we were going to lose in a couple turns anyways. And so, like, a little bit of extra setup with some extra dragons... Right, if for some reason we could, if we, for some reason we had a chance of survival, like a swing with our dragons on the next turn, we could have cleaned up their board state anyways with the Thunder Maw abilities. Okay, opponent goes first. All right. All right, I suppose. Hmm. Spyglass Siren. Okay. The good news is it is not, it is not mono red. Um. Awkward mana, huh? For the turn. We go Mirex. We go Freebooter. We can call Rogue on the Cavern to make sure we have uh, Rogue on the Unrepentant and the Scoundrel. Yeah, that, that should be fine. So, map token on the Spyglass. Um, my guess here is mono blue artifacts, right? Or it could be like the mono blue uh, budget. Ooh, Delver. Okay. Okay, Haunted Ridge. That's good to see. So we will call Rogue on Cavern. Make sure we continue to curve out properly. Put this down. And treasure token, right? And I suppose we could cheese through the Freebooter. Um... Or cheese through both of these, probably. Or we could keep a blocker on the ground, too. Now, we'll, we'll get the swing. Because any amount of extra tempo, too. Okay, they flipped the Delver. Easy peasy. And it's a Fading Hope, too. Yeah, that's the tempo that I'm thinking of. So if we end up getting rid of our Treasure Token to get a big thing down and they go Fading Hope, that's actually really bad for us. Another hoard, uh, Hoarding Broodlord. Lording... Board Lord? <laughs> okay. So, next turn, Terror of the Peaks, just like anything we do, gets tempoed out. Let's maybe just set up with the Restless Vents for the turn, get that out tapped, make sure we have the bigger plays later on. They're swinging for five in the air, so we are on a clock here, and it's a pretty fast clock, too. All right. Yeah, so Haunting Ridge, pop the treasure, get the Akul, Fading Hope, the Akul back to hand. That's really, really bad for us because we don't see mana off the top. We have no extra plays because everything's on the top end here. It can't be as simple as a Fading Hope being held open though, right? It can't be that simple. That can't be the reason. Okay, another Spyglass. Mm, they're still going to keep that one open for the Fading Hope, unfortunately. Okay, yeah, there's the fifth mana. So they'll have to pay an extra three to send the terror back, but it's the same concept. If we end up losing the treasure, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It is eight for the Horde Lord. Hoarding Brood Lord, that's what it is. I'll get it one day. One, two. Uh oh, crap. Murex isn't tapping for the Akul. No matter what we do here, actually, Decadent Dragon was a great play then. I guess, like, expensive taste could help us find our own tempo. We're just in big trouble, dude. We might even die next turn, honestly. Because they have seven on the board if they hit a counter with the uh, map token. So, Fading Hope bounce the Decadent Dragon. Uh, I guess we cheese these through because I... Well, no, no, no. No, now we want to keep blockers back just in case. Because they could go island and then power up the map token and swing on the ground. 
Either way, the Fading Hope is out of their hand, thank goodness. Let's see if we survive the turn. Um, Brotherhood's End would be really good, right? But they could keep open a counter spell too at that point. Hmm. Terror of the Peaks number two. Well, I suppose that's it, huh? That's a, that's a lot of big chunky things and that is just, uh, that's, that's too much for us to deal with. Let's see if they uh, counter this or just bounce it back to hand and win the game that way. It, it really only took a very small amount of tempo from the opponent, which I guess should really tell us something about this build, right? Well, we got 25 land in here too, so maybe we could have seen a little bit more land, but it's not like we have 26 in here. We can't go around complaining just yet. All right, let's take it into the next match and see if we can actually pull something off here. The opponent did all that tempo with just two mana, by the way. I think that really says something. Uh, a lot of that came down to the greed on the casting cost of the Akul as well. Because at any point, like on turn four, the good thing we saw that Decadent Dragon, but just an incredibly small amount of tempo is all it took. All right. Let's see. Okay, right into the next game. That's good. Yeah, let's see if the deck can actually do a thing because I, like, usually at this point in the video, I'm like, oh, I have a lot of faith in the deck, like, and we can totally get there. I'm, I'm, I'm actually losing faith in the build, which concerns me. Start with Rebooter and then, no, 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 I'll go for the uh, turn two Scoundrel. Right now, the mana is not lining up great. Maybe we need to opt for the early dual lands in general here maybe maybe yeah going for the scoundrel instead of the freebooter like the freebooter is not necessary we also could have okay okay we saw mana okay good news guys good news <laughs> Yeah, it, it was potentially a mulligan. Gonna swing for that one. And we're gonna save the treasure. Definitely not worth playing Freebooter off of the treasure. Not yet, at least. Naturalist, okay. Uh, Decadent Dragon isn't terrible. I'd rather Bone Horde next turn, though. Could use the expensive taste potentially, too. I wonder what we end up seeing. Do we just save that for their turn now? Could find a one mana card worthwhile. Probably not though. I think I'd rather just ramp into the Bone Horde. Uh, against Celestia enchantments though, you have to anticipate a lot of removal. A lot of enchantment removal. The Rite of Harmony was a great hit off the Seed of the Hope, huh? Or, yeah, Seed of Hope here. Because it has that flashback. I'm assuming with Naturalist 2, this is a Katilda style build as well. Okay, Naturalist number 2. Gonna be Restoration of a Ganjo. Okay. So we let them thin out the deck before we activate the Decadent Dragon. That way we see less land. Although seeing land from the opponent wouldn't be terrible, too. Okay, they probably swing. Nope, they're gonna hold it back. The expensive taste. Target opponent. A nurse visitor. Okay. And restoration. Okay, not bad. Yeah, against Selesnia, getting two things down is much better than one. We have no planes to search out for restoration and generous visitor. Both of these would consume our treasure token anyways. I guess we attempt the Bone Horde Dracosaur, but that just doesn't seem great to me. Unfortunately, every time we play a creature, it's kind of like, oh, well, we play the big thing and then the big thing gets removed. So how do we get around that? And there's not a lot of great ways to get around that. Uh, not a lot of great like protection spells for Rakdos and stuff, especially. So we just kind of play the big thing and hope that it survives the turn. And if it does... Then we're sitting pretty. Okay, they got four mana open. 
Hollowed Haunting for two mana because two Naturalists is on the board. Okay. Not too scared of them going wide because if we get Broodlord down, we can find that uh, Brotherhood's end from the build. And then as long as these Spirit Clerics don't get, well, as long as we, well, equal to the number of Spirits they control. Okay, this is a 1-1 one, one spirit that'll die to a 2. So as long as they don't go above the 4-4. Four, four. Treasure token, huh? Okay. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we can call Dragon on this quite successfully. Rude Lord, find Brotherhood's End, and that's it for the turn, though. If that's what we end up doing, that's it. Maybe it's just better to get some of the other stuff onto the board instead. Riveteer's Requisitioner. We could play the Generous Visitor successfully here. Since uh, Convoke, you can play your one drops for free. I guess that's fine. Oh, same concept with the Freebooter. I almost missed that, guys. I almost missed that. Do they have more on the board? I wouldn't be surprised if the opponent threatens lethal next turn, though. And I'm not 100% convinced that the Brotherhood's End is actually going to be able to take care of their board state, too. But it's probably still worth grabbing, just in case. Two Rite of Harmonies in the Grave. Um, Brushland in hand and two cards we don't know about. So as long as it's only one enchantment, then... The Brotherhood's End will totally wipe this board. Oh, except for the Architect. With Bone Horde and Broodlord. Bone, Bone Horde and Broodlord. Oh my goodness, the names, huh? Okay, potential, potentially good blocks here. Oh, keeping it back. Oh, I wonder what's left in hand. Maybe some protection? Cool, over here we find some mana from the Bone Horde. Not bad, not bad. Let's not forget that our creatures can help us cast a lot of this. Terror of the Peaks. It's actually really good. Before we lose some of our 1-1s, one we should play Terror of the Peaks. Right? One, two. Make sure we keep some, some of our red creatures open. We got to make sure we can cast the Brotherhood's End. So then we go just all the big things, right? One, two, three. We'll have treasure and terror and, or bone horde, but bone horde wants to swing for the turn. Let's get the Akul down. Unfortunately, we don't have anything big in hand. Also, Akul's red too, so that can also tap for the uh, Brotherhood's End. At this point, five damage to the architect wouldn't be terrible, I suppose. But I think we want to just go face. Because this is so much damage. Oh my goodness. Okay. One, two, three. I guess we can go... One, two... Yeah, one, two, three. <laughs> no, it's much better to swing. Much, much better to swing here. I don't know what's in the opponent's hand. Wait, we still have four for the Decadent Dragon. Oh. All right. I, I'm going to risk it. I hope they don't gain two life here. That would be tragic, huh? At that point, maybe we should have grabbed. Or. Okay, we got there. Wow. All right. It was a little risky that time. Risk paid off. Okay, I'm not going to lie. This one's melting my brain a little bit. I, I had to I had to think through that a lot. So they had one card in hand that we didn't know about. So some things that exist in here, we already knew that they had Seed of the Hope. That could have gained them two life and they'd still be in this. So it was risky. It definitely was. Especially if they would have been able to pop off on the next turn. We only would have had one blocker. Like Ossification takes care of it. Full swing, something ridiculous, right? Especially if they had like two enchantments too to buff all these extra spirits. We might have survived, though, because we're still at 20, luckily. Anyways, another card that Selesnia runs 
Uh, Tamiyo's safekeeping also could have gained them two life too. So yeah, once you have all these things in exile, once you have Broodlord on the board, there's a lot to think about because you're getting a lot of these creatures out and you're kind of like spamming them onto the board. And even though they don't have haste or anything, you can still tap those for the other convoke cost too. And we also have that treasure token to calculate in as well. Um, look at how wide we went. This could have been insane if this last card in hand wasn't a land and instead we sacrifice three. Like you don't have to tap the Akul to activate this ability. We totally had enough creatures here to activate that ability. So if this was another big thing while that terror was out, I, I mean, I don't even know where to begin. That That is exactly what the deck is trying to do. Let's see if we can do it again, right? Or We're only 25 minutes in, so we have time for one or two more easily. All right, opponent, what you bringing to the table, buddy? Okay. We can always call human on the cavern for the freebooter if we want. Everything else is pretty late. Opponent goes first, unfortunately. I guess early removal on the invasion. All right. We try this. I guess it's not an ideal hand as far as, like, the extra ramp and everything goes, but there's a lot that we could draw into here. Arming Scoundrel. All right, call human. Get the freebooter down. The mana fixing hasn't been terrific, has it? The mana base might need work done a little bit. Oh, a couple epicures. Okay. I'll take that block. I'll take that chump. A little bit of ramp goes a long way. And we can chump the one now or chump and then they drop monstrous rage later on. Like, there's not, not a whole lot of difference overall. I'm going to keep that. So, Requisitioner has proven itself to be pretty bad against Mono Red because of Kumano, once it flips, like, the whole exile ability and everything. But I don't mind it here for some reason. So we could go Scoundrel, guarantee the treasure. We have five mana next turn. Hoping that Witch Doctor Frenzy doesn't pick up Dracosaur might not be the best bet. Uh, Invasion of Tarkir, take out Swift Spear could be pretty good. Make sure the Prowess doesn't get out of hand. We'll have four next turn then. And a chump blocker on the board. We go. Okay. Okay. Let's let's ramp get the chump blocker down. How do you guys feel about that? We could pop the treasures, get requisitioner down. I think ramping into the five drop makes sense to me. Also, yeah, we could use the treasure for the invasion too, but. I don't know. Really tough decision, and it comes down to whether or not we think the Dracosaur is going to die. Other than that, uh, pretty terrific ramp. That's a play with fire that's not hitting our face, guys. Phoenix check. Definitely a Witch Stalker Frenzy style brew. Charming Scoundrel. If it is Witch Stalker Frenzy for the turn, I, we might not die. Worthwhile? Let's do it. Let's do it. Man, Mono Red is so stacked, huh? Like, another match where we're sitting here thinking, is our big old beefy creature gonna die? Um, Mechanized Warfare. Oh, very nice opponent. All right. I should have known it was Mechanized Warfare style. Get a great block there, and we take six. All right, we need something good here. Oh, there we go. Doubling down. Error of the Peaks as well. Good blocks, but how do we want to do this? we we got to clean up this board state a little bit, right? So we can call Dragon on this cavern now. So, Decadent Dragon. Well, we could flip something. Keeping blockers on the ground's good. And this is very much an end the festivity style build, too. They only have one card in hand. We can filter out with uh, the blood tokens as well, though, so we want to consider that. Okay, so if we go Scoundrel, uh, maximizing the amount of chump blockers seems like the best case scenario for us, right? 
And so, like, utilize it. Well, we could also go... Invasion might need to take out something a little better. Okay, Decadent Dragon. Yeah, utilizing the exiled cards from the Dracosaur seems pretty good here, too. We could swing, but I don't think we can. Uh, mechanized Warfare on this board and being at six. I, I mean, they could drop two hasty things, right? And all of a sudden, losing that one blocker becomes deadly. Like they're going to trade some out here. All right, it's a mountain they're trading out. And... Phoenix check. Okay, yep, there's one hasty thing. They'll have a mountain open, too. Um, right, so we pool block everything. Yes. I hope that's not a monstrous rage. Oh, it was it was being held open. We're alive. <laughs> All right. But now we need to figure out how to end this as soon as possible, huh? The Broodlord, we actually don't have all the black mana required for that. We only have two sources of black mana. So we could go, um, we could go Realm Scorcher. I mean, Terror of the Peaks is pretty good too. I am pondering opponent. One, two, we go, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, if we go Realm Scorcher, bargain, bargain for four, bargain the token. That's 13 damage on the board. Okay. Bargain. We'll get Riveteer's Requisitioner down. We go, we could go... Four black sources. No, no, no. This is an eight mana card, not a seven mana card. Okay. Yeah, since we had to get rid of the the uh, token creature here, too. I wonder what's holding up on the opponent's side. It kind of feels like a play with fire, doesn't it? Play with fire for three, and then all they need to do is see burn off the top anyways. So invasion will hit three to face as well. Uh, so it's, what, 16 damage so far. Uh, we could blitz the Requisitioner in. Is there a more effective use of mana here, guys? Wait a minute, wait a minute. We're also going to be getting a treasure from the Decadent Dragon Swing as well. We're going to go all red. And we got to keep those... Or they, We got to use these now, right? Yeah, unfortunately. I will reveal to you my ter Terror of Peaks to get maximum amount of damage through. And also get our Riveteer Requisitioner down. Since we don't have lethal damage, I suppose we should still keep two blockers back, right? So we want to swing at you. Swing. That flips there. And then win next turn, right? Like, make sure we still have as many blockers back as possible just in case it would have been really sick if we could have found that extra damage to get through if we were planning on flipping this and we go terror of the peaks for five instead of the realm scorcher realm scorcher didn't have to be the play but we didn't have the extra mana from the realm scorchers bargain then too but it still could have been terror no 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 yeah yeah, we wouldn't have been able to play the invasion on the same turn. That's right. We're one mana short from that. Okay, okay. That makes sense to me. So we got nine going through and lethal on this board next turn. Even if they remove a couple of these big things, Realm Scorcher Hellkite happens to be just a terrific blocker for mono red since it actually has the six toughness too. Like we actually have the... Um, like if it's Witch Stalker Frenzy, for example, but then also if they play something that has prowess and they give it Trample with Monstrous Rage, just an absolutely terrific blocker. Oh, that's right, that's right. The uh, Bone Horde was swinging over here at the invasion. 
I don't know what I'm thinking, guys. I was thinking nine damage was still going through. I, I guess it's because it was holding open for so long. Poor Broodlord. That would have been pretty sick, though. If it was Broodlord. Oh, no, mana. I believe that is a GG, guys, but I suppose they could find something. But for six, I guess not. Oh, wow. Rivals of the Claw. Hey, GG opponent. This would have been such a fun swing, though. Ah, jeez. It looks like we got another Terror here. Let me view Battlefield. Another Terror. We had double treasure. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven. Play this. That's eight mana. So terror number one was coming down, but we still wouldn't have been able to get any extra creatures on the board that turn. Uh, Decadent Dragon also swings for an extra treasure token too, though. So I guess Rivas could have come down. Yeah. So that could have been an extra three damage from the Terror of the Peaks too. Okay. So technically at that point, we could have held back even more swings from the last turn. But the Decadent Dragon Swing made sense too because we're establishing more treasures on the board. Dude, good stuff. Let's go one more. Let's do that. It's totally doing a thing when it wants to do the thing, so... It kind of feels good, but I, I don't know. I'm hesitant to say that for sure because we had some rough games there too. So, so rough of games that even I was giving up hope on the deck. You know what I mean? So, e Honika's first. This is uh, this is what makes me think we have to, um, well, maybe just talk about the mana base more. Probably call Dragon on the Cavern. Make sure we have the black sources for the dragons in the build. We see Freebooter off top. That could be really bad. So we're just going to hold Cavern back for now and just go Mountain. Swift Spear. Oh, no. <laughs> well, Terror of the Peaks. All right. All right, Invasion is going to have to come down over Requisitioner, I would say. Make sure that Swift Spear number one dies. Actually, Triple Invasion, this might actually be terrific. Hopefully we start seeing mana before our turn three, too. Either next turn or the turn after, we definitely need to see three. Well, we're going to need to see more than three, but you guys know what I mean. We have a bit of a boosty boost. Monstrous Rage number one. And play with fire. Going down. Oh, a felonous rage as well. Getting that extra boost that way. Down to eleven. Okay, four mana card isn't terrible. Definitely call dragon on this. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Invasion of Tark here still picks up the Swiss Spear, luckily. We shall reveal the Terror of Peaks. From M21, that's the one we'll reveal. Okay, let's see how powerful their turn three is. Because if it's just a Godric, then Invasion of Tarkir picks up Godric qu quite well too. In desperate need of mana. Hopefully it comes in time. 25 land in here. There it is. All right. So that's our third. Um, Now we need our fourth next turn. It'd be nice if the fourth was a, a black source as well for the Akul. Nah, so we just like... Wait, wait a minute. Oh, wow. Three dragons in hand, guys. We could totally flip this. Is that good? That might be pretty good. All right. Invasion of Tarkir. Reveal all of our dragons. Because we could do that again next turn with the other invasion. So these big Thunder Maws might be enough. And then Thunder Maw Swing takes out Picnic Ruiner without a buff on it too. So that could actually be really, really good. Man, oh. Yeah, a couple things that I'm thinking. Number one, I think we might need to drop one or two Cavern of Souls. Even though the mana fixing on that I thought was going to be really, really good. It kind of feels like it holds us up just a little bit every now and then. Like, it's not holding us up now. It's just, like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, here it is holding us up, right? Because we don't have the black source for the decadent dragon that we just drew. Okay, so they have one open. We don't have to do... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we do this before combat. Yeah, the triple invasion's pretty good, huh? It worked out really nicely. Because then what, what ends up happening here is the other Thunder Maw. So this ability triggers twice. 
Uh, only if we attack the opponent, though, right? Whenever a dragon you control attacks. Oh, never mind. So we can attack this, get that ability twice, target Picnic Ruiner, and then target the invasion. So we flip the other invasion. All right. Easy peasy, huh? <laughs> yeah, GG opponent. I totally understand, buddy. Just like chaining off the invasions is so good, huh? I would have loved to see the Akul come in for the last game, but at least we were able to showcase that dragons can, in fact, do a thing. I actually don't know what the deck win rate was today, but it felt 50% after a while, right? Like, I think we actually landed on a 50% win rate. All right, guys. Rakdos Dragons. Here's the deck list again. Okay. Let's change this up a little bit, huh? Where do we want to start? We want to drop a couple caverns, right? Go up a swamp. Why Why were those swamps hiding? They totally felt like they were hiding. Uh, another mirror. Probably not. Mirix made sense at first, but then, like, once it's established on the board and it's no longer mana fixing, it totally held us up a little bit. But also, just, like, in a deck like this, especially if you end up wiping the board and stuff, too... It's nice to start establishing mites, and then the mites work with the bargain on the Realm Scorcher and everything, too. So I think I still like the Mirex. Just more mana fixing. I don't mind the Restless Vents. Powering up Vents, too, helps us filter. Filtering in this deck isn't bad, because we can eventually bring back with Rivas. It's like, um... Early mana in general might be the better bet here. No, probably not. Probably not, because if you see Black Cleave Cliffs off the top, I don't think... Yeah, I don't think that's... When when you're in that late game and you're like, oh man, fifth man off the top would be sick because we have a treasure or two, right? And then you see Black Cleave Cliffs and you just like you just cry yourself to sleep at that point. And that's the same concept with the Restless Vents, but in this build, I feel like we just don't mind getting Restless Vents down early tapped as much. So the Haunted Ridge still makes sense. I think the untapped sources with the Sulphur Spring still makes sense, even though they are going to do some pain to you every now and then, especially if you have like three of them on the board when you're trying to cast the Unrepentant too. Uh, which the Unrepentant, how do we feel about this? It's pretty greedy in the mana cost, but that, well, like we're trying to fix up the mana base right now for that. So, so far we dropped two Cavern of Souls. I think they're still going to be worthwhile. We went up a Restless Fence and a Swamp. Okay, uh, three Terror of the Peaks would probably be fine as well, right? And do we need 26 mana in here? You guys could totally see why I only went two Requisitioners over, like, over the opposite, right? Instead of, like, two Scoundrels, four Requisitioners, four Scoundrels just made a lot more sense, but... If you don't have all the Scoundrels, they are rare, whereas Requisitioner is only uncommon, so if you could go the more budget route with Requisitioner. Additionally, the Requisitioner still makes sense in here, since we do have Terror of the Peaks that actually cares about the power of creatures entering. So if you enter with Scoundrel, you're just dealing one to something. If you enter with Requisitioner, you're dealing three to something, which is pretty good, huh? I think the double Requisitioners is still worthwhile. I do wonder about the... Uh, the quadruple terror of peaks. Is it necessary? Honestly, the Brotherhood's End, there were so many moments where we were like, oh, well, Brotherhood's End could pull us back, right? So maybe we want three of these. I'm going to say like 26 mana, but maybe we drop a terror and go up the third Brotherhood's End just based on what we see. Based on what we are seeing. At that point, if you really want 26 mana, you could drop some of your early ramp too. Freebooter didn't do nearly as much as I thought it would, but it's still going to do the thing, trust me. It's still that, that concept of, oh, hey, I have a chump block, now I ramped. Or, I don't have a chump block, but I'll wipe your board, and now I ramped, right? So it's just like, kind of fits that concept with the Akul too, so I still like the Freebooter. But maybe we could drop down to one requisite requisitioner and go up that 26 mana just to make sure we are seeing the mana when we need to see it. I could see that, especially with all the mono red we've been seeing in the last couple of videos, especially. One Commando Flips Requisitioner is not great. It was the same concept with the Freebooter, though. But there's something about the Requisitioner at that point. 
That makes me wonder. I would say like Plaza of Heroes. But the only legends in here is the Akul and the Rivas. So I want to go up a mana, but I don't know what mana to go up. Maybe we didn't need to drop both of the uh, caverns. Wait, wait, wait. With all the Convoke and stuff, maybe we go up the other Crucible. The problem is they tap for their color. And the spirits are colorless. What do you guys think? I'm kind of I'm kind of stuck on this one. I'm totally down for dropping one requisitioner down to one. And I want to go up something. And I'm thinking the 26th mana. Just because it's it's a fairly expensive build overall. Could it be as easy? I don't think it's a swamp. Uh, we are heavily leaning towards red. Right? Over double into red. The problem is that like the triple black casting cost in the hoarding broodlord too. There are going to be moments too where a counter spell just ruins your day. So maybe it is cavern. Back up to three. Is that really where we want it to be though? No, probably not. Because it is going to hold you up every now and then. From casting your decadent dragon to your bitter triumph or anything like that or you end up casting like human early on but then not having your dragon for the uh cool or something like that too it totally worked out earlier where we cast rogue which was pretty neat but okay i guess i'm gonna send it back down to two cavern 25 land it felt like enough today that just like my gut instinct saying like 26 would be a little better but maybe there is enough ramp. And by dropping back down to 25 and just keeping the requisitioner for the original concept, we get to keep those extra creatures in here for when it does come time to sacrifice three creatures to the Akul um, as well. So I think that makes sense to me. So what we ended up changing in the build, guys, is we went down from four Terror of the Peaks to three. We went up a Brotherhood's End. We went down two Caverns, up one Restless Fence, and up one Swamp. And that's it. Overall, I don't know. It's probably janky, but it felt pretty good in the games where it did a thing, and it felt pretty bad in the games where it didn't do the thing. Really tough, and actually some of those games were really hard for me to pilot too, so I think just more more testing. I don't think it's actually going to be a hard deck overall. There's a lot going on, but it, I like again, my gut feeling just says it's not going to be too difficult. Just a little bit of practice, and I think it would go a long way for being able to pilot uh, the build much better, so... All right, guys. Hey, if you made it this far into the video for real, y'all are champions. I super duper appreciate you and I will see you in the next video.